I'm Tom Emmer. Now, you're probably already tired of hearing ads for November's election. I'm Tom Horner. But there are some people who haven't heard any of them yet. Mark Dayton learned his values. Seriously, they haven't heard them, and it's not because they don't want to. Hello, my name is Elise Knopf. Elise Knopf is one of thousands of Minnesotans who are deaf or hard of hearing. With people like Elise in mind, the 2008 Minnesota legislature passed a law requiring candidates who take public subsidies to close caption their TV ads. Mark Dayton learned that lesson well. As state auditor, When we checked, it appeared all the candidates running for governor were doing that. But the law also requires that those ads, if they are two minutes or less, be captioned on the web. We looked at all the videos that Mark Dayton, Tom Horner, and Tom Emmer produced on their websites. The Republican candidate for governor only looks too far to the right. We found that both Tom Horner and Tom Emmer, who take public money and are required by law to caption their videos, are not doing so. Mark Dayton will close the tax loopholes for the rich. Mark Dayton, who is not taking public financing, has captioned about half of his videos, but his most recent ones are not captioned. If you can see the campaign ads on TV with captioning, why is it important to have them captioned on the web, too? Well, for there's many reasons, actually. Consumer choice, for one. Some people don't watch TV. Some uh, of the young, younger generation, um, they're online all the time. Deaf-blind people use different programs that they prefer to go online to access, to have access. Uh, it's consumer choice, but I think the important thing is it doesn't matter where the ad is being advertised, if it's TV or Internet or radio. Um, the issue is access. If hearing people can access those three media, why deaf and hard of hearing people cannot access them? To get thousands of dollars in public subsidies, candidates must file a form here at the Campaign Finance Board. Now that form, which I have here, is a very simple two-page document. On it, it says that they agree that they are going to caption their videos on TV and on the web, and that they're going to do transcriptions of their radio ads on their website as well. Both Tom Emmer and Tom Horner signed those forms. It's possible to opt out from the captioning law before the ads start running. None of the gubernatorial candidates has opted out this year. In 2008, several Minnesota House campaigns were able to opt out from the law because they did not have a website, or it was difficult to close caption the TV video. Closed captioning video, however, is easy and free. At the uptake, we've been closed captioning the gubernatorial debates with a lot of help from our volunteers by using a free tool that's available on YouTube. Just put your text in a document, upload it, wait for YouTube to process it, and voila, the captions automatically appear in the right place. But because you already spent the money. There's a link at the uptake with detailed instructions on how to do this. So if it's so easy to do, then why isn't it happening? I can't really answer that. Only the candidates would be able to answer those questions. Um, I know that our office has contacted or done outreach to all of the offices and offered assistance. We've also let them know about uh, Video Captioning Essentials, our online course, um, and uh, we have know that they've also received uh, handouts, flyers, when they uh, register with the Campaign Finance Board. Uh, they're informed of this obligation that they have. Section 6 is the section dealing with captioning. It certainly isn't a partisan issue. Members, I should say that we worked with the governor on the sections of this bill, and we anticipate that the governor will also sign the bill. When the law was passed in 2008, only three people in the House of Representatives voted against it. Representatives Sarah Anderson, Mark Olson, and Tom Emmer. One other possible reason is that there's no teeth in the law. The Campaign Finance Board has told me that there is no fine, no penalty per se, for not following this particular law. Now, on top of that, for them to take action, usually somebody has to file a complaint. And on top of all of that, the, there's a lot of special interest money now that's being spent on campaign ads because of the recent Supreme Court decision, Citizens United. And that means those ads, since they're not coming from the candidates, don't have to follow this law at all. But law or no law, there is one very good reason why all of these campaign ads should be captioned on TV and the web. Well, the main reason is for access. Ten percent of the population 
or deaf or hard of hearing, and they have no access to information that is heard on the ads. I just want to add that I think it's so important for candidates to uh, make a good faith effort to reach all people in the country. And really, it's something that's not expensive. It's something that's not hard to do. It's not rocket science. I think it's important to show that you care about what people in this country think and believe and understand. If it was you who became hard of hearing, lost your hearing, wouldn't you want that access too?